Good morning, everyone. On this beautiful, beautiful July day, we say the words of the psalmist. 
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Deacon Brenda Tibbetts, your neighbor uh, to the west in Cook, and I serve on the Synod staff as a Synod Minister for Leadership Support. And it's a, always a joy and a privilege to be with you for worship. A um, couple of notes to, to uh, be reminded of that when we are singing uh, today, we would ask that you please wear your mask um, anytime you're singing. Um, and then just note that it's a wonderful day, so there will be coffee on the Parsonage lawn today, so I hope you can hang around for that later. We begin our service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Um, Amen. Please stand. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are contact to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your world and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all of your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering hymn is number 611, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. O oh God, 
powerful and compassionate. You shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people, that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be alone. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside the still water. You restore my soul, O Lord. And though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Good morning, everyone. Relation, we're simply going to sing Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go since we all know that one. The Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. <laughs> Shepherding God, we come before you this morning with cares, concerns, joys, and sorrows. We come wishing to touch even the fringe of your garment, that we might know your healing and your wholeness. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace to you, my siblings in Christ. Grace and peace. Amen. On behalf of Bishop Amy and the entire Synod staff, I bring you warm greetings, as well as a heartfelt thank you for your faithfulness to the gospel of Jesus Christ here in Ely and in the surrounding area. And thank you, too, for your faithfulness and mission support that provides the necessary funding for all of us, together as the Northeastern Minnesota Synod, to reach even farther around the globe with the good news of 
God's love for all people. Thank you, and may God continue to bless you. The apostles gathered around Jesus, and he said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. And as Jesus went to shore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. As I've been wrestling with these two familiar texts this week, a couple of things kept surfacing. Probably the most obvious theme is that of the shepherd and the sheep. We are certainly familiar with the 23rd Psalm, just as Jesus and his disciples would have been, since the Psalms were like their Lutheran book of worship, sort of, <laughs> without the Lutheran in it, right? In today's reading, Mark's Gospel tells us about Jesus' compassion for the people who were like sheep without a shepherd. Did he have the 23rd Psalm in mind as he looked over the hurting, broken people who were bringing their loved ones to him for healing? I wonder, do we see crowds of humanity in need of healing through the eyes of compassion or judgment? Jesus had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And as a follower of the Good Shepherd, this text convinces and challenges me to see crowds of shepherdless people through the eyes of Jesus. In John's Gospel, chapter 14, which was not a part of our appointed text for the day, but is nonetheless pretty similar, Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. My sheep hear my voice and they know me. I give them eternal life and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. We say, the Lord is my shepherd. This shepherd provides safety, leads the three sheep through dangerous and dark valleys, anoints the wounds with healing, goes out of his way to rescue the wayward and the lost, and will do anything to protect his flock from harm. These are the images we carry in our minds and the hope we cling to in our hearts. Jesus, our good shepherd, who indeed gave his life for us so that we would know abundant life, love, hope, goodness, mercy, and be welcomed into the community with the gathered flock. And yet, what about those crowds, especially the crowds that might not make the best decisions or with whom I do not understand, agree, or maybe even approve of their behavior? That is where the second challenge that I wrestled with comes in. Our gospel lessons from Mark and John throughout the summer have been discipleship teachings. Amazing things have happened along the way as Jesus journeyed with his disciples healings of all kinds, stilling the storm, feeding thousands of hungry people. Disciples watched in amazement and perhaps some fear. Who is this, they're thinking. They asked him questions and Jesus continued to teach them. But the passage of scripture we heard this morning does not refer to them as disciples. This time it says, the apostles were gathered around Jesus and told them all they had done and taught. Disciples are learners and followers gathered around Jesus. Apostles are sent out ones. Most likely this is the same group of followers gathered around, but by this time they had traveled many miles together, learning from the Good Shepherd. They had seen firsthand the power of God working before their very eyes. It was time. So Jesus sent them out. Sent out to witness, teach, serve, bring healing to those who were wandering around in need of a good shepherd. And they returned to Jesus to tell him all that had happened. Those would have been some amazing stories to sit and listen to. Now, there's a whole other sermon that could be preached on Jesus telling those apostles, the ones who had been sent out into their local mission fields, to practice some self-care 
by being rested, refreshed, and renewed, as it is so important for healthy leadership. But I will save that sermon for another time. And I am grateful that your pastor is doing just this. Apostles, you are apostles. Sent out ones are those who have been named, claimed, called, and sent out. For you and for me, this happened in the waters of our baptisms. We too are called to be disciples, sitting at the feet of Jesus, learning and growing in faith by the power of the Holy Spirit. Then we are sent out to be apostles, witnessing to the shepherd bless through word and deed, all about the wondrous love of God in Jesus Christ, our good shepherd. Where and to whom might our good shepherd be sending you out as neighbors in this community? In whom or in what do you put your trust to see you through the darkest valleys of life? How have you experienced the stilling of storms or healing in your own life or in the life of a family member? Who might be waiting to hear you share your firsthand account of being rescued by the Good Shepherd? The late writer for communications, Creative Communications for the Parish, Arden Mead, paraphrased the 23rd Psalm, which provides the comfort of the familiar along with the aha moment of hearing something fresh. I hope it speaks to you wherever you find yourself this day. Perhaps in need of rest, comfort, encouragement, or even a challenge to step out in that trust that indeed the Good Shepherd is leading you to new pastures, quiet streams, and restoring your soul. Mead writes, you need to hear something old anew. And what sort of a king is our shepherd king? I think you know. I think you know quite well. Our shepherd king is the sort of king who makes us lie down in green pastures, who bids us drink from still waters, who restores our spirits. Our shepherd king provides the sort of comfort that tools of gentle guiding control provide. Tools like a rod, to staff. Our shepherd king leads us, doesn't force us from behind, mind you, but leads us through dark valleys as dark and deep as death itself. Our shepherd king sets a table for us so sumptuous that plates are heaping and the contents of cups cascading across the table and onto the floor. Our shepherd king is generous with costly gifts, gifts like goodness and mercy and forever. It's probably been a very long year or two years for most of us. There is a real thing known as pandemic fatigue. Sometimes I think, how can I be so tired when I haven't gone anywhere <laughs> for all that while? But there's something about that that has made us tired. It has made us exhausted. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The invitation is there for you to come to Jesus' table of mercy, to be nourished and strengthened for the journey of discipleship and the courage for being sent out as apostles to share the good news. Amen. Please join in singing our hymn of the day, number 719, We're Across the Crowded Ways. <laughs>
Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please rise as we I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He was under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray for the Church, the world, and all of those in need. God of the Incarnation, continue to remind us of your presence among us. Be especially with those affected by COVID-19, those who are sick, hospitalized, all those who have died, the families affected, and all those in the medical profession called to care for those who are sick. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Restore your creation, O God, and we pray for those who are desperately in need of rain. We think of those who are fighting fires in our area and up in Canada. We pray that you might sustain croplands and pastures and safeguard all farm animals and livestock. Preserve lakes, rivers, and streams that offer refreshment. Revive lands recovering from natural disasters and protect coastlands threatened by rising oceans. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Reconcile the nations, O God. Break down the dividing walls that make us strangers to one another and unite us as one human family. Equip leaders to deal wisely with conflict and guide diplomats who seek peaceful solutions. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray that you would be with all those who have lost loved ones in the floods of Germany and Belgium. Bring them comfort in the midst of their grief. Strengthen and keep safe all frontline workers who are tirelessly working to save lives or find the bodies of those who have died. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of healing, help those who are hurting in mind, body, or spirit to know that you are present in the midst of distress. Today, we especially lift up Erica, Lyle, Amy, Zach, Byron, Doris, Brian, Vicki, Dick, Shannon, Beverly, Dick, Mary, Diane, Andy, Dave, Bob, and Dave, and all of those we name now aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Nourish this congregation, O God. Prepare a table where we receive food for our hungry spirits. Renew our commitment to provide for one another and revitalize our ministries of feeding and nurturing hungry neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of every time and place, we give thanks for all who have died, now citizens with the saints. As you have received them into your heavenly home, so welcome all of us to dwell in your house forever. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commit all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy to your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you.
this time we offer our offering to prayer. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered, in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. stand. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. In his right to give our thanks and grace. You are indeed holy, almighty and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, for shed for you and for all people for the salvation of your sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With the whole church on earth, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. The table is now ready. All right, I have a tip for you on how to open these things. <laughs> so, we all have this, right? And you can see where this little tab is. Run your fingernail right on the edge of that tab, and it actually releases that tart part, and it's easier to peel back. So, the body of Christ given for you.
And may God the Father, Son, and God the Holy Spirit cause grace to be mighty upon and through you. Our second hymn is hymn number 789, verses 1, 3, and 4.